everyone, welcome back to QSR Nation, your weekly source of food service marketing and business strategies for success. Here are your hosts, Josh, Beth, Tony, and Grant from the PFS Brands National Headquarters in Holt Summit, Missouri. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of QSR Nation, the first one of 2020. Woo! Woo! We have all of your typical hosts here, um, Grant, Tony, Josh, and Beth here from the PFS Branch National Headquarters <laughs> in Holston, Missouri, to talk about food service marketing and business strategy for success. Did I forget somebody that time? The look of satisfaction on Grant's so. face right there was... Yeah, he got named first that time. I know, and Beth went last. That's never happened in 140-something yeah. 2020's off on the right foot. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're... Never mind. <laughs> No, she, she has turned a new leaf in 2020. She's going to be yeah. nice. No, yeah, never mind. <laughs> so we hope you had a great New Year's and a great holiday season in general. Um, holiday seat trees and trees and treat. I can't talk. Holiday, I'll, I'll tell you from here. Holiday, holiday treat season. Treat season. There we go. Has uh, officially ended as of yesterday. Yep. yep. So um, I did not actually get any late last minute holiday treats delivered to me, but that's from okay. From one of our co-hosts who promised those. Yeah. I mean, ben. she will be remain, remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. That I started keto and it's been rough, guys. Okay. Well, we didn't yeah. start keto. Yeah, we you didn't. could have brought us chocolate and caramel stuff. Is that not brutal for me to have to make all that You didn't stuff? have to stay in the room while we... I Aided. think you're being incredibly selfish. <laughs> well, no, anyway, there's always next year. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, yeah. She, Actually, yeah. technically, it's later this year. Yeah. Well, next season then. Yeah. Sorry, next <laughs> holiday <laughs> treat season. Always <laughs> next season. That's, yeah. that's the. Right, I'll be coming up for you. No, only about 300 days. Oh God, let's oh, not look ahead. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, so today. Obviously, it's the new year, new year. <coughs> I cannot talk today. So new me. year, new you, new, new me, new stuff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, so today we're going to talk about five restaurant trends that will five restaurant trends that will define 2020. And this is um, through RestaurantDive.com. What do you guys think is one of the restaurant trends that will define 2020? Grant. Oh. I think the biggest one uh, that still we saw it up the uptick in 2019 quite a bit, but it'll continue through 2020 i think um uh delivery oh you totally oh. took mine uh, I, see well, that's no, what no. I, I told you guys i'd take yours yeah. but no I, I, mean, I have one it's such oh, a okay, such a changing uh place right now to delivery there's a lot of moving parts going on but i think that's still um something that we're going to see increasing wow that's some really good insight beth <laughs> i still think that the whole the being extremely healthy, offering different uh-huh. options like that is going to be the number one trend center that people in different restaurants need to get on board with. Because mm-hmm. even though, yes, you may offer some not so healthy options, people are looking for that. And if they're going to spend money, they don't mind spending it on healthier options. Yeah, especially are you, are you, the meatless yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you really pushing for a more keto friendly diet? I would love that. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> if you have any suggestions, please email me. <laughs> All right. I'm hungry. <laughs> Tony, what, what are your thoughts? Um, you know, I, I think we're going to see a continued struggle with staffing. Um, I think that's going to actually um, increase with some issues coming up in 2020 just because the economy has been so strong. I think that restaurants more than ever are probably going to struggle with staffing. So it's going to be very important to make sure that um, you're making solid decisions on uh, what you can and you know cannot afford uh, to you know, keep personnel-wise and uh, what you can't afford to lose personnel-wise. So I think there's going to be a pretty strong competition for wait staff. Those are all three great trends that we will see in 2020. Yeah, I wonder what? if they're I wonder if they're in your top five over there. Well, let's see, um, no, Josh. Before you get there, do you have any? I was going to say probably lifestyle campaigns and LTOs to drive marketing. Let's see what they say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number Can you one, elaborate a little bit more. On that? <laughs> number one on their list is lifestyle campaigns and LTOs <laughs> will be the key to marketing. Wow. Uh, well, they're really talking here about um, you know like the lifestyle, like the Taco Bell hotel things like that. You know the lifestyle of Taco Bell. What's that? You ever heard of the Taco Bell hotel in Vegas? I think it's in Vegas. Huh. Palm Springs. But it's like literally a hotel. <laughs> Taco biggest. Bell, like, yeah, whatever. Am I the only one that hasn't heard of this? Or? Is, that, is that the one that has, like, the full canteen and everything with yeah. it? Yeah. Can- yeah. You could get married yeah. there. You could get, I mean, everything is done. Yeah, and this yeah. also has the examples of, like, um, you know, Colonel Sanders and just really building that out and Popeye's, you know, the whole chicken sandwich thing and stuff like that. So, really, those lifestyle campaigns. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. You all don't agree with that one, You huh? were so no, insightful I mean, on that one, Josh. Yeah. Makes sense, I yeah. guess. Okay. Let's move on to number two. <laughs> 
Let's see here. I got to scroll through my thing. Uh, number two, menus will shrink and simplify, which I think mm. is a very good one, actually. Yeah. I, I like that one. Yes, definitely. I mean, there's so many restaurants you go to, and it's eight pages of items. And uh, from a food cost standpoint, you know, simplifying the menu is, I think, going to be really a great move for a lot of restaurants. You can do a lot of things with chicken, with fish, with, mm-hmm. you know, beef. So, you know, you can still have a lot of variety there, but I definitely say – minimize your waste and really bring those things down so you can have and honestly i think probably at the end a better experience just because there's not going to be so much on the menu find what you're good at like what are your signature dishes yeah. and really focus in on that yeah i'm all for that one uh i have a hard time even choosing where to go eat much less than yeah. then i get there then i have to decide <laughs> what to eat but panic, panic, panic order, order. Dude, that's a real <laughs> thing that's a real thing we have yeah. our I mean, your panic order here. <laughs> Deci- uh, decision fatigue is a real thing because yeah. nowadays, like, we make so many more decisions every day than what they did like 30 years ago before the internet. So, oh, wow. I was reading. Green has really oh, just man. flipped a page this yeah, year and become more wise. Yeah, and to your point, they they have a quote in here saying, "If you streamline your menu, you can do so much more to improve your efficiencies." Like Tony said, reducing waste, the quality of the product, like Beth said, yep. and order time for the customer. So customer experience. So it all kind of wraps up. Nice. Yes. It just makes sense. Sometimes we really do sound like we know what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and other times, we sound like we normally do. <laughs> so this one is probably more of an urban area type thing. But number three, ghost restaurants will mature. Do we all know what ghost restaurants are? Yeah, yeah. I do not. Those are like, kind of like the pop-up restaurants. We don't necessarily need a brick-and-mortar location. Oh, okay. I yeah. your cousin do those? Yeah. Yeah. He does, actually. So, okay. I mean, and, and having those ghost restaurants where you can actually go somewhere and cook in a commercial kitchen and then, you know, take those things, and uh, for especially for delivery purposes, yep. I, I think you're going to see a lot more of that just because of overhead issues. My God, Tony, you just read this article, and it said ghost re- the ghost kitchen segment is only going to get bigger, bigger, especially with third-party delivery providers such as DoorDash getting into the segment. There See, I'm just smart like that. Moving on. Okay, <laughs> number four. <laughs> micro chains will be flavor trendsetters. Ooh, flavor. What's an example of a micro chain? Let's see here. Um, bah, 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 bah. Let's see. Does anybody know what a micro chain is? Let's see. I don't know. I'm really <laughs> struggling here. What's going on over there? She's got a sneeze. I got a sneeze. Oh. <laughs> sneeze. <laughs> well, the, <laughs> let's see here. They're most likely to be the kinds of restaurants in tune with many of the consumer trends, sort of like Asian flavors, Korean barbecue, just small little regional chains, oh. things oh. like that. Um, you know, really looking at a lot of ethnic foods as well. So, okay. Kind of like your Soul Tacos that is here in Colombia. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Would yeah. you consider that still part of like the fast casual side, right? Or not? Well, sure. I mean, I think different could be, ones could be both. Yeah, I mean, the different yeah. ones would be some would be that with your um, street taco flavors, and some would be more sit down. Um, but I, I think again, it's focusing. With the, it sounds like they're talking about just like small number of units. So you might yeah. have anywhere from you know, five to maybe thirty in a chain. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the different and ver- the variety of um, ethnic flavors I think have continued to. Um, really be a trend center for the last several years from everything with the Shiraka, you know, infused stuff to, um, you know, even curry infused items are getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. You know, I personally don't like Indian food, but a lot of my friends love it. And, you know, they, so they really like to couscous? see. Couscous? Oh, I love couscous. Is that Indian food? I don't know. I, I don't, think I don't it's know either. I don't, I don't know. I don't either. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. But I mean, I just those different, you know, infused <laughs> flavors um, have, have been really. Someone send best some couscous for God's sake. <laughs> the garlic parmesan. This QSR one. Nation brought to you by couscous. <laughs> <laughs> but I think those those continued uh, infusing of ethnic flavors are going to be uh, trendsetters for a long time, actually. Yeah, and to your point, the micro chains they have they can take those risks too because they're very small and agile, so they can try experimenting with all kinds of different flavors and foods and profiles. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. I was making sure my mic was on. It doesn't look like it, but it is. Okay. <laughs> micro beers and micro chains. Perfect. Ooh, Ooh you right. said beer. Oh. <laughs> that is on my 2020 list. Okay. Number five. <laughs> um, this is the last one, obviously. Number five of five. Um, Gen Z is gaining more influence. That's just the trend that they're seeing, which makes sense because yeah. they're getting well, they're older getting and older. having more buying power. So. Well, and some of them actually have their own money now with, you know, working and uh, yeah. price to living at home with mom and dad <laughs> and mooching <laughs> off of them 
AKA my children, if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> that's a serious point right there. Yeah. You have more disposable income if you're not paying rent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that uh, group is more apt to delivery and, you know, pick up, order, things like that as well, I would assume. Apps. Well, and there's a trend there with more like an antisocial climate as far as actually being in a restaurant with other people, um, wanting to, you know, just stay at home. My kids don't have to leave their bedroom. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like, for the love of God, get out of here and let's go socialize and look other humans in the eye. Yeah. And it's just like, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 starting off weird. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, they also make a good point here and that the key there is going to be authenticity. I know we talked about that a lot here before. And mm-hmm. as they say, don't think you can fake it with this generation or several of the, any generation, really. So authenticity. Anybody can chime in. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a lot about the Gen Zers. I know we talk about uh, talk about them in our presentations a little bit. Just how they're Gen Zers. They want to. Everything needs to have a purpose. And so and that's one thing that we had learned at um, our inbound conference that Josh and I had gone to is that they want to make sure that there is a reason behind every single action that a company does. So whether it is you know the Toms or the Bob shoes, whenever every time you purchase something, there is a shoe that's being. Um, what's the word given to another donated donated yeah thank you donated to another country you know that's what they're looking for and they want to be every single company should be authentic in their mind as to what they're doing to give back to either the community or to the environment nice does that help yeah that helps yeah and i I know like uh video is important across all demographics right now but it's probably especially important for that gen z demographic that's why we are now doing video yeah for all of our gen zers in case you haven't noticed yeah watch it they're kind of corny, yeah. but <laughs> kind of. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> They'll get better, okay? Yeah. Okay. Just don't watch the next couple. And then, oh. <laughs> and then kind of to reinforce the point number three about, or is it point number two? Strip, uh, having a smaller menu. I was also on, uh, browsing this restaurant dive site, and it, as of January 3rd, Chick-fil-A announces that they are cutting six menu items from their menu. Wow. Yeah. I think they're, one of the items they were talking about cutting back were like salads. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, the side salad, the original chicken strips, the grilled, the cool wrap, and side salads. I'm guessing three other ones that's listed here. So, yeah. And so, I mean, it, it was kind of interesting. One of the things was like a breakfast sandwich, too, I think. It was like a sausage egg uh, biscuit or something like that they were cutting back. But I think some people were shocked that they were cutting back on the chicken strips. Yeah. Um, but, you know, their whole focus is. You know, sandwiches on that sandwich and they that's where i think they feel that they have the most uh margin and the most opportunity to continue to compete in that space so that's where they're gonna you know continue to move forward with and simplifying a menu can be you know a, a really really good thing yeah. uh, you just got to be sure that you make some good data driven decisions so that you're looking at you know what you're cutting back are things that you know are probably lower margin items that were lower volume as well Agree. Yeah, that's really that's a it's a kind of a catch twenty two though because people want more options relative to healthy options, but then we also need to simplify our menu. I guess it's all about knowing your demographics. Yep, exactly. Well, and definitely in the listening to your consumer base there, but at the same time, making decisions that are, are smart financially for your company as well. Yeah. Um, don't do crazy, rip the band aid off, um, drastic changes. I don't think just because that can backfire, but it is. You know, good to, you know, maybe say, hey, you know, starting on this date, you know, be the last day for this particular item on the menu. Right. And that way, you know, it, one, it might get some people to you know, order it to think, oh, it's, you know, it's, you know, basically you're treating them as an LTO, but, you know, it's not going to be available after this date. And so maybe you can actually sell through some of that product. Yeah. Yeah. But because you don't want to wind up, you know, discontinuing something and getting, you know, having to waste a bunch of stuff out. So just be smart with that. But I think that is simplifying a menu is a huge opportunity um to move forward yeah i know i'm a i'm the one that gets caught by that if, if, I, if I see a product is soon to be leaving i feel like i have to get it yeah. before it goes away for sure <laughs> and you could always bring it back kind of like the mcrib once a year however often it is if people go right. crazy for yep. that thing when they bring it back so yeah yeah so any other ideas for trends in 2020 the list was pretty good i think that was pretty good that was a pretty good list i mean no your all's choices didn't make it mine did <laughs> yeah. I think delivery was sort of woven in there. Yeah, well, I did read something about that in there, didn't I? Yeah, you sure did. Yeah. 
Um, so <laughs> one of our big pushes for this year is if you guys would please subscribe to the podcast and please go to iTunes and leave us a review. That would be incredibly huge. Yes. Um, and Beth, what about our social media channels? So we're really ramping up our social media. So not only will we be just he- seeing and hearing audio podcasts, but we'll be also doing a lot of video. So be sure to stay tuned to our Instagram and our Facebook and our Twitter pages. Um, you can find us all at qsrnation.com. And also check out our brand new website that Josh built out for us. It looks pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. And um, it's Good very job. intuitive and very interactive. So definitely go give it a look. Thanks, Beth. That was the first compliment you've given out in 2020. Wow. You're yeah. welcome. I went to Josh. Wow, yeah, that's great. All right. How do you feel? Very well. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. For all, your, for all of us here at QR Nation, we'll talk to, QSR Nation, we'll talk to you next week. I'm going to learn how to speak in 2020. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Champs Chicken. For deals, discounts, and updates, check out champschicken.com slash connect. Be sure to stop by next week for another episode of QSR Nation. And be sure to check us out online at pfsbrands.com forward slash podcast. <laughs>